he was going to rebuild the mosques. When he refused to rebuild the mosque, because he hates Islam with passion, Sultan himself went to Oka, the capital of an Ambrest, to appeal to Peter Obi to rebuild this mosque. He never rebuilt the mosque once he left that place. And all the nonsensical insinuations that he vomited at that time are now in the social media. How he, he bastardized the northerners, a lot of them killed, a lot of them maimed, a lot of them raped, and he destroyed the mosque of the Muslims. And the northerners are waiting for him to come to the north and tell them the kind of person he is why they should vote for somebody who is the North and is Islam. So that one has paved way. Because definitely the Southwest will vote for Tinobu. He's their son. He had been there before. He had performed excellently well. He changed everything about Lagos to what Lagos is today. A, 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 a state whose IGR was 600 million and now can vote of about 40 billion naira in the month through his boys who took over from him. And he's still there, larger than life, you know, mentoring us, so many people. The vice president, who is an ingrate, was mentored by him. He took it from the classroom where he was a poor teacher to become the Attorney General, eventually to be the Vice President of Nigeria. Talk of fire me in a kitty state. Talk about uh, my friend, Ogbeni uh, So many of them that he mentored, Akiri Dolu and all the whatnot. They are now great people. They have been governors, ministers, and so on. So you cannot compare Itinobu, for instance, with any of the two of them, especially uh, Peter Obi, who wants to give an impression that uh, he's uh, incorruptible. And he cannot explain where he got the money to be next. In Abuja, next mall is the biggest mall in the whole of Abuja, bigger than any other one you can think of, and hold personally by him and all other businesses that he himself confessed that his family did the business with government. Where is that done anywhere in the world? That is fraud. If your own family business now partners, the government. You are in control. So who, who does the sharing? How is the, how is the business for, the sharing formula done? So he cannot claim to be an innocent and giving an impression that his, his, his party now, the Labour Party, is different from PDP or APC. Because he was in Abga, he was in PDP, he was even a vice presidential candidate of Atiku in the last election. So all this is just, uh, you know, political gimmicks which Nigerians are not prepared to take. And that brings me to the issue of the so-called uh, Afeni Ferry and Obasanjo himself. The, the, the rumor mill had it that uh, Obasanjo was born by an Igbo, Igbo man who married an Egba person. Yeah, this is what he had done even when he was in government. The Minister of Finance was an Igbo woman. The Central Park Governor was an Igbo woman. The one in Fair Fair, Fair in Nan Revenue. All strategic positions he gave to the Igbos. And now he's gallivanting all over the place, you know, telling Nigerians to vote for B. Vote for Bill for what? You as a Yoruba man. What is your business, you know, fighting for the cause of, of an Igbo man? 
And if I have my way, I will tell the Igbos to go, let them have their Biafra. Because all the rubbish, all the moralities, all the bad things that we have in this country today are, were pioneered by the Igbos. Think of kidnapping, they were the war started kidnapping Igbos, I mean, uh, kidnapping uh, white men for ransom. Think of baby factory, put some young girls in a place, get some young men to impregnate them and sell the children. What of drug? Anywhere you go, those of us who travel all over the country, we know that it has gotten to the extent that we went to Germany and an hotel was asking us whether we are Igbos because it has been part of their principle, their policy, not to give their hotel to an Igbo man. Because they, they deal in drugs, they peddle drugs, they are the grandmaster, you know, of the drug peddlers. They are the barons of the drug peddlers all over the world. It's just anything to make money. How can you add over Nigeria to this type of people? And so it's intriguing and a shame that an organization that was established, that was institutionalized for protecting the Yoruba race, the self-styled Afeni Ferry, have taken the position of Anagbaya in Yoruba. So it's are old people who are irresponsible. To leave, they are, some of them are over 90, like they are, they are, they are president now. Ayobanjo is over 90 years of age. They left the cocoon of their, their houses in Lagos and went, and went to the east to pledge their support for an Igbo man. Igbos will not allow you to even have a shop in Indonesia. But everywhere you go, go to a world road in the bad that they control your the place. Go to Namde Azikwe Street in, in Lagos. Go to Alaba. They are all over the place. We allow them to do their business. Nobody... And that is why I, I laugh sometimes when they talk about the issue of uh, Biafra. Who is going to lose? How many Yorubas have business in, in, in uh, Indonesia? In, or in Aba. Now you go to Sabongiri in Kano. Who is controlling all the business? The big, big business. Go to Abuja, all the big, big hotels. Who own them? Because they, have, they make their own money to cook and cook. But for Afeni Ferry to protect Tinobu, but we know the Oladani factor is the fact that Tinobu, even if he is not a serious Muslim, who allows his wife to be a part of some of the children are Christians. And they know this. He gives a lot of money to the Christians. But the fact that his name is Ahmed is a problem with the Afeni Ferry. Because go to Afeni Ferry, how many Muslims are within the Afeni Ferry? The only people you find there are the, you know, Muslim hoodlums and hooligans and irresponsible elements they use for thuggery and hooliganism. All the big shots, uh, uh, since the, the Afeni Ferry was formed in 1950, tell me the Muslims that has been the head of Afeni Af of Af Af Ferry or the Yoruba Council of Elders. So, everything has to do with their agenda to put Christians above in everything in Nigeria, especially in Yoruba land. And that's why we are even suspicious of this so-called Yoruba nation agenda. There is no Yoruba nation and yet our, our girls in schools cannot wear hijab. So analyze. When we have the northern oligarchy to protect Islam, the Christians who are within 
you know, our environment where our brothers and sisters we are, in, you know, intermixed, still cannot accept our girls to put on simple hijab. Even a few days ago, I had to call the Controller General of Immigration. When I, I was, I got a phone call from Akure that women were not allowed to, to, be, capt to be captured with their hijab. And these are the people who now want to form a Yoruba nation which they will head and probably they would make a proclamation that nobody should call prayers and so on. We will not allow it. We are going to fight them with everything legal and, you know, extra legal, extra constitutional to make sure that they do not succeed in having a Yoruba nation. And by the grace of God, all their attempts, all their plots to make sure that Tinubu does not become spread there will come to nothingness. Allah is going to support us in spite of our weakness, in spite of the fact they have the wherewithal, they have the money, they have the mass media, whether it is uh, the newspapers, the print media. It's only the social media that, alhamdulillah, because it is always almost free, we are having to, to counter-attack whatever attack they do against Islam. So by the grace of God, the Muslims have been awoken. They were in slumber. It was the Christians who came out and said, initially they want a Christian president. When that failed, they now said they don't want a Muslim Muslim ticket and they start shouting to rooftops. They going all over the place. Churches have become political rallies. To the extent that if you don't come to the church with your PVC, you are not even allowed to worship. <coughs> so they have awoken the Muslims. We are no more sleeping as we were. We may not have reached where we are going, but we have left a place where we allow them to take over everything and dictate to us. By the grace of God, we will we'll do our best. <laughs> Yeah.